you expressed that you were a little disappointed. Um, can you just talk to me about your emotions as you sit up there now, a couple of minutes uh, removed? Yeah. Um, you know, in this sport, a win's a win. Um, but that's not what I wanted to do. That's not what I prepared to do. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm grateful for the win. But I want to be. I want to go out there and be dominant. And um, I just fell a little short in a couple positions. But you know, much credit to to Dante. He he had a good game plan, and um, they did a good job. And I guess what do you attribute that to? Is it just uh, you know some mental mistakes in there? Was there things you could have prepared for differently? What do you tack it up to? Um, I you know. I just got to be do more damage on top. I got to get to my positions. You know, I did a good job controlling them. Um, I missed the right hand once or twice. I felt like that was part of the game plan. I thought that I was going to land that right and shut his lights out. And, um, you know, he never really, I saw everything from my feet and he never really threatened anything there. Um, he just did a good job of making me do all the work when on top and, and kind of slowed me down. And then in the third, he just did a good job of staying against the cage, you know, and, I exerted a lot of energy, so we just have to be, I have to be a little smarter with uh, where I want to explode in the cage. And I know, obviously, you just talked about how you wish you had uh, maybe performed a little bit better, but uh, being able to fight in front of your hometown crowd, was that still something special regardless of, uh, of your performance tonight? Yeah, you know, I'm happy to have all those fans there. And like I said, they, they, this is a sport and it's entertainment. They spent their hard-earned money. And that's why I was disappointed, is I didn't get to put on an exciting show and get a finish in front of them. And, and that's on me, you know, and, and I take full responsibility for it. And that's, that's why I'm disappointed. And I guess, where do you think this puts you in the division? Uh, obviously, Yaroslav Amasov, you guys fought a, a few fights ago, but you're kind of the guy that, that perhaps had the best performance against him. So do you feel like you've positioned yourself well, uh, you know, maybe at one fight or, or, or so away from the title? Yeah, you know, um, like I said, I know it wasn't my best performance. But I did that same thing with Yaroslav and made him the most exhausted he's ever been. You know, that's kind of my style is grinding and we're adding more implements to it to be more explosive and get more, you know, get damage. But he knows how deep I took him into those waters and had him in trouble. And, you know, Lima really didn't do that to him. So, like I said, much respect to Amasov. I respect him. He was nothing, we were, he was nothing but gracious, gracious after the fight and I was to him, but... I got in this sport to be world champ. Jim Barcelona with Miami Hero. Congratulations, Logan. Just to follow up on that, too, your last two fights have been split decisions against those two. Just how do you put in perspective just having it go to a distance like that? And then what was going through your mind the last fight and then also for this fight? Being that, I mean, tonight, tonight it looked like you did a lot more. You mentioned you just going after him and being aggressive. Did you feel confident, though, too, going to the judges you were going to get the win tonight? Yeah, I, I don't know how that split decision, how that was a split decision when I had 13 minutes of top control. You know, yeah, he landed an elbow or two from bottom. The third round was not impressive, but he didn't really do anything either. Um, but the first two rounds were dominant. So how a judge scores that for him is, I don't know. It's interesting to me, you know. Um, but that's on me too. I got to do more damage on top. But the fact that one judge thinks that he won that fight is, is that's beyond me. Yeah, it looked like you did a lot more than, than what he was doing. And Logan, also for you, talking about uh, your goals and things like that, will you be taking a little time off now or no? Or are you just going to go right back into it and get back into the grind at Sanford MMA? Um, i take a couple of weeks here, uh, let the body heal up. And then um, we got to figure out some things with myself and, and, and how I can... Um, push through those situations a little bit different. And me and Robbie Waller and, and Kami Barzini and Henry Hoof went back there and sat down and talked right away, you know? You know, of course, a win to win. You get two checks, you go home happy. But, you know, that's, I expect a higher standard for myself. And so we're going to go back to go back to the drawing board and get those things figured out. And Leslie, for me, Gable Steveson, University of Minnesota, and the gold medalist was there. Uh, did you get to uh, talk with him at all prior or even after? And what are your thoughts of uh, help training him in Sanford MMA down here in South Florida if he wants to go that route? Yeah, no, I haven't talked to any of those. I talked to him this morning just on text, but I'm going to go see those guys. And, and you know, he signed with uh, Dave Martin, you know, my agent with his NIL deal. Um, 
with college now. So, uh, no, I'm excited to see what Gable's going to do. He's a, he's a really good young kid with a, you know, already amazing uh, sheet of accomplishments, but I'm excited to see where his future's at.